Hello everyone, welcome. Today we shall be talking about the third chess Olympiad that happened in 1930 at Hamburg in Germany. Yes, the ban on professionals was lifted and 18 teams participated and most of the nations sent their top players to this event. Some mentions are the world champion at that time, Alexander Alakine, played on the top board for France and also won the best game prize in this event. Poland was led by one of my favorite, Akiba Rubinstein, who was about 20 years past his prime, but he played with flying colors and gave one of the most memorable performances in any of the Olympiads. Tartakova also played for the Polish team. Hungary was led by Marokzi. Flor was the top board player for the Czechoslovakia team. The American team had Kashtin and Marshall. B. Sultan Khan also played for England. Now, let me show you a few photos from this event. So this is the Poland team that participated in the Olympiad in 1930. Beginning from the left, we have Friedman, then we have Tartakova, and then Rotman, and Akiba Rubinstein, as we already discussed, he was no longer young in this Olympiad. Let's have a look at the Czechoslovakia team. So we have Flor right here, who seems to be very young at this point of time. We have another photo where we have the Czechoslovakia players playing. So we have Flor right here with his teammate, Rechfer. And we have another photo, which is very common to a photo nowadays, where we have a crowd all around. Anyway, this game was played between Austria and Spain. Getting to the results, Poland won the gold medal, Hungary won silver, and Germany won bronze. As you see from this table, Akiba Rubinstein from Poland won the best board prize with the highest individual score of 15 from 17 games that gave him a percentage of 88.2, which took him to the top of the table. And then followed by Floor at 85.3% and then Kashtan at 82.4%. Now, at that point of time, there were no specific rules for fixed board orders and everything that we have now. So players at that point of time played on different boards. So it was not possible to give specific prizes for specific boards like we have now. So what was done is in this particular event, the top three individual scorers were given board prizes as board prizes. Now, let's have a look at the shortest game from this Olympiad, which was just 11 moves. So the game went e4, e6, d4, d5. We have the French defense. Knight c3, knight f6, and bishop g5. This is all theory. Everybody knows this. Bishop e7, e5. Knight e4, again, you may be wondering, how did this game get over in another six moves? <laughs> Let's keep going. Bishop into e7, queen into e7, just trading. Bishop d3, developing and attacking the knight. So black captures knight c3, bc3, c5. And here, white plays his move queen g4, which is, again, theory. And black castles, which is also very, very normal. And here, white goes knight f3. Now here, black had to just stop the Greek sacrifice. And that is what happened on the board. Probably a move like f6 would be fine for black. But here, black made a blunder, went with the move c4, you know, maybe hoping for white to go back because the bishop is really strong over here. But white did make use of the bishop on that very diagonal and bishop into h7. And marine, playing black, had to resign this game. Now, let's just have a look at a couple of moves to why this game was resigned right over here. So after uh, king into h7, uh, there was going to be queen h5 or knight g5, both the moves work. Uh, we'll just consider queen h5 check, king g8, knight g5, and there's an unstoppable checkmate here with queen into with queen h7. And if 
black gives up the queen well then white is simply winning and if black tries to run away let's say rook uh, d8 white simply goes queen at seven and there is still a checkmate so this is why uh, black resigned and it's a very short sweet game i hope you enjoyed it